Hello and welcome to today's lesson, Properties of Polygons. Today we only have one vocabulary word that's going to be important to our lesson. Polygons. These are two-dimensional figures formed by three or more line segments or sides that meet only at their endpoints or vertices to make a closed path. The sides may not cross one another. This shape, for example, is not a polygon. Sorry, it's not a great shape. It's not a polygon because the lines cross right here in the middle. Now let's talk about some different ways to describe polygons. There are many different ways to go about describing polygons. This one is probably a familiar one to you. This is a rectangle. In a rectangle, these two sides, the long sides, are the same length, which is indicated by this little line that each one of them has. The short sides, this side and this side, are also the same length, also indicated by the two short lines on each one of those sides. In a rectangle, it has four angles. One here, one here, one here, and one here. And they are all right angles, which is indicated by this little box that's drawn in each corner. If an angle does not have that little box, it is not a right angle. So, if we were asked to describe this rectangle, we might say it has two sets of parallel, meaning that this side will never run into this side, and this side will never run into this side. So it has two sets of parallel sides, and it has four right angles. The parallel sides in each set are congruent, which means that they're the same length. This polygon should be familiar from our last video on triangles. This is an equilateral triangle. That's the name of the polygon. But what are some other ways that we can describe it? We can look at the sides, we can look at the angles, and we can discuss how those things compare to each other. In this case, because it's an equilateral triangle, all sides are the same length. They are marked with this line, or hash mark, that tells us that. Because there's only one on each side, we know that they are all equal in length. Another important attribute of an equilateral triangle is that all three of the angles are 60 degrees. This is always true of an equilateral triangle, no matter how big or how small it is. Finally, let's look at a more irregular shape. This is one that doesn't necessarily fall in with the squares or the triangles or the rectangles. It is a quadrangle, which means that it has four sides, but other than that, it doesn't have a specific name. What are some ways that we can use to describe this shape? Well, we can talk about the sides. Looking at the sides just from sight, I can tell that none of the sides have the same length. So I'm going to draw in some hash marks that show that. So this means that this side is not as long as this side. It's not the same length as this side, and this side is not the same length as any of the sides. All four of these sides have different lengths. Now let's talk about the angles. Obviously, we can look and see easily that angle A and angle C are acute angles because they're smaller than 90 degrees, although angle A might be pretty close to 90 degrees, and I would have to measure to be sure. Angles D and angle B are likely a right angle, angle D, and an obtuse angle, which is angle B. So, none of these angles have the same measure. We're going to mark those with differing, different numbers of arcs to show that none of them are the same length. Here's angle A, angle B, angle C, and angle D. And that shows that they all four have different measurements. Here is your practice problem for the day. Describe this shape using as many of the attributes as you can. Remember to think about the length of the sides, the possible measures of the angles, and what types of angles they might be, and whether or not any of the sides are parallel to each other. You can also give this shape a name if you know what its name might be. Make a list of the attributes in your math notebook. Good luck!